Good Morning Church. I just want to give a big welcome to each and every one of you, wherever you find yourself this morning. Maybe you're all huddled in your living room, maybe you are eating breakfast in your kitchen, or maybe you're still laying in bed, enjoying a coffee, and you're joining us online. Wherever you find yourself this morning, I just want to give you a great big welcome. My name is Dana, for those of you that don't know me, and I just want to welcome both our Cambridge and our Air Campus, and a very special welcome to anybody that's maybe joining us for the first time. Maybe somebody sent you the link to join us or you stumbled across us through social media. Um, welcome, you are so welcome here and we can't wait to meet you in hopefully a couple of weeks time when we can all join together again. Um, this morning we're gonna hear from Steph and Drew and I just wanna encourage you um, wherever you are in your homes just to enter into worship this morning. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to spend some time worshiping with everyone, um, and I'm just in awe of God's faithfulness through this time of just being so present and being able to see the church move and be mobilized even when uh, they can't be in the building, and I'm just I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit that is present with us and walks with us, and we know that um, God's presence is not bound by distance and by time. Um, he is everywhere in every moment, and I'm just so thankful for that. And so, Lord, we just invite you here today into our worship. God, would you inhabit our praise? Would you calm our hearts and give us peace and help us to rejoice? Even in the midst of the uncertainty around us, God, we hold fast to who you are. We're so thankful for your presence, God, and we just give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you'd like to stand, if you want to worship, um, if you have an instrument, I'd love for you to join along at home, and we'll just spend some time praising God together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. Then you would bear my cross. You done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King. 
king who conquered the grave Worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave Worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave Worthy is the lamb who was slain
you we trust you your ways are higher than our own we trust you we trust you your ways are higher than our own sing that over your life we trust you trust you because your ways are higher than our own oh we trust you jesus we trust you because your ways they're higher than our own because this we know we will see the enemy run this we know promise you ever made Jesus you are unfailing this we know we will see the enemy run this we know we will see the victory come we hold on to every promise you ever made Jesus you are unfailing Jesus you are unfailing Jesus you are unfailing you never fail Jesus I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many. I've seen many. Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all I can't.
can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 as you call as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am, it's love by you, Jesus. by Jesus. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Cause you are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory we just declare that you're worthy of it all. Every praise, Lord. Every word that leaves our lips, God, help us to turn it back to praise for you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. God, I just pray that you would touch each heart watching today, God. Wherever they are, wherever they're watching from, whatever they're walking through, Lord, we know that you're present with us, God, and we give you glory and praise. And as we rejoice, Lord, we know that your word says that you give us peace that passes understanding. I just pray that you would flood every heart with peace and joy and help us to be excited for what you're doing and where you're working and where you're turning for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping. Well, thank you so much, Steph and Drew, for leading us in worship this morning. I do have just a few announcements before we move on to the message. The first one being we have some programming for the kids and for the youth on our website. So after the message, make sure you jump online and check that out. Um, we also want to encourage you to continue to give during this time, even though we're not meeting as a church family. And so there's a bunch of ways you can do that. Um, you can jump on our website, mycalvary.life slash give. You can give through there. You could drop your tithes and offerings off at the Cambridge campus, or you can mail them into the Cambridge campus. 
You can also text 77977, or lastly, you can do it through your online banking. Um, we are also going to be doing our Good Friday service here on Friday at 10 a.m., and we're going to be sharing in a special time of communion together. So what we want you to do is this week when you grab your groceries or you order your online groceries, make sure you get some grape juice and some crackers or some bread. And so that as a church family, we can still come together um, and celebrate communion together. And then we are also going to be having our Easter Sunday service online at 10 a.m. It's gonna be a huge celebration. Um, so please send this link out to all your family and friends, post about it. We want everyone to join us and just to celebrate um, the message of Easter together. And so now I'm just going to welcome Pastor Jeff. I know he's got an amazing message for us. So continue to tune in as we hear from Pastor Jeff. Well, hello everybody. And thank you so much for joining us for another installment of our online Sunday service here at Calvary. I want to extend a special welcome to all of our friends at the Air Campus. I want to say hello to everybody from the Cambridge Campus. And I also want to welcome everyone who is part of our extended online audience. We're so honored that you've chosen to join us for this moment together. You know, these are unusual times that we have had to make adjustments to move the ministry online, but I know that God has been moving in powerful ways through this. Even last Sunday, when our own family gathered in the living room to take part of the live broadcast, we were so touched. We were moved by God during that time together. I was moved to tears throughout most of the service, just experiencing God's presence and also just feeling a broken heart about not being able to be together. I miss you guys. I miss seeing your faces. I miss shaking hands, hugging necks, high fives, joking, laughing, praying together, crying together, doing life together. And guys, I am so looking forward to getting back into that relationship routine. But in the meantime, we're dealing with reality as it is. And I know that over the first couple weeks of this crisis, one of the common messages that have been trumpeted just about everywhere in Christian circles has been, we need to choose faith over fear. And that has been such a great message for us to hear, to share abundantly, and to receive personally during times when it seems like anxiety and fear are pressing in and trying to get us to go upside down. We've needed that message. But I've also been sensing God moving in my heart, leading me to pray for a divine strategy about what is our next step now in this season, in this chapter of everything that's going on. And I have sensed a clear directive from God as I have been praying and seeking Him that this next step for us is to make a deeper connection with each other. Now, I know that you may ask the question, well, Jeff, how in the world are we going to build a deeper connection with each other when we're in such an extended time of isolation? You know, we've all been locked away in our homes now. Of course, some people's jobs require them to leave or others to be at home. But for the most part, so many people are, are self-isolated. You know, hearing these words, slow the spread, flatten the curve, stay at home. And as a result, we've been locked away in our homes and we have been enjoying wearing pajamas and, and comfy pants on a daily basis, probably for more times than we could ever remember, maybe dating back all the way to elementary school. I remember I used to love wearing track pants and wearing the knees out, uh, playing mini hockey on the floors and driving our parents crazy. But here we are again, locked away in our homes Yet we have this spiritual mandate to build a deeper connection with each other. I think to do that, we need to understand who we are as a church and who we aren't as well. You know, there's parts of the world where church really is more of a monument than a movement. Carrie and I have had the privilege of going to Europe numerous occasions for missions or personal reasons. And there's certain parts of Europe that you go and there are beautiful churches. They are so ornate, the stained glass, 
the savvy architecture or the old stonework. Uh, my thoughts go to Sagrada de Familia in Barcelona, where it has been under construction uh, for over a hundred years and it's still not finished. And they're building this church and it's beautiful and people literally pay money to go and take pictures. Friends, that's the definition of a monument, a physical address that people go to to be awestruck by the building and what's inside. But that's not the biblical definition of a church. The biblical definition of a church is not to be a monument, it's to be a movement. It's for there to be motion, it's for there to be activity, it's for there to be life and growth and expansion and reaching others. It's, it's on the move and that's who we are. And that's how we can understand that we don't have to be limited by this time of isolation right now because we're a movement, we're not an address, we're not a monument, we're not stuck at 127 Hespola Road, right? We're not stuck at 173 Northumberland Street. We're a movement. And when these kind of things happen and we end up being scattered in the way that we are, we make adjustments and we make changes and we find ways to grow a deeper connection because it's that deep connection with each other as members of the body of Christ that is critical for us to maintain our health and maintain our vibrancy. So I've been reading all throughout the scripture and especially in the New Testament in moments where the followers of Jesus, believers were scattered and yet coming together again. And, and one of the, these themes just began to surface out of scripture. And I want to put it in a statement that hopefully can stick for you. And it's for us to understand that during times of isolation, a crisis of isolation can actually give birth to a new opportunity of deeper connection. Let me say it again, a crisis of isolation can actually give birth to a new opportunity for deeper connection. Two main examples that come to mind for me, uh, one would be while Jesus was on the earth and one would be after he left. The first one is found in Matthew 26. And Jesus is with his disciples and they have been together for a few years now and he's been teaching and they've been with him in his teaching and they've been with him in his miracles and they've been with him at weddings and eating meals together and experiencing amazing memories as a group. But then Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus goes alone to pray. And then there's the eventual arrest where he's betrayed by Judas with a kiss and the crowd, the mob that came with clubs and swords took him away. And after being arrested, of course, eventually crucified and executed on a cross for our sins. And you got to think about these disciples that were with him for a few years. They're going, wait, wait a minute, Jesus, don't go. And they've taken him away from them. And the Bible says in Matthew 26, that as a result of the arrest, that all the disciples scattered, they fled. They all went to their own homes and thus began a crisis of isolation. They went from having great moments of unity together to being isolated and, and, and scattered into their homes alone, afraid, dealing with fear, dealing with anxiety, dealing with the uncertainty. What's gonna happen now? All these things that, that Jesus did and he's gone. And I've got to wonder, you've got to wonder what was going through their minds and their hearts during this time of uncertainty feeling alone, feeling afraid, feeling isolated, having no idea what was coming down the pipes next. But here's the good news. God knew what was coming next. God knew that this crisis of isolation would lead to a new opportunity of deeper connection. After the crucifixion, after Jesus was resurrected, and just like he promised, the Holy Spirit came. You can read about this in Acts chapter two. You can do that in your devotions this week. And the Holy Spirit came. And you know what happened? The great scattering 
turned into a great gathering. And there were thousands of people that came together. And as Peter's preaching, there were, again, thousands of people that came to faith in Jesus as a result of Peter, this coward from before, is now a courageous man preaching. And everyone's just in the moment going, wow. And this gathering, this divine opportunity arose out of the ashes of this great scattering. And maybe we think, man, like, okay, that happened once, but I I want you to see that a few chapters later, it's like somebody hit the rerun button and everything happened again for different causes and different reasons. But if you fast forward a few chapters in the book of Acts, then you'll go to Acts chapter eight. And then you'll see that even though the, the believers experienced this great gathering together, In Acts chapter eight, as a result of Saul's persecution of the church, he opposed the church. He was making life difficult on them. He was gathering up believers and leaders of the church and dragging them off to jail. Friends, it says in Acts chapter eight that as a result of Saul's persecution and his opposition of the church, that all the believers scattered again. It was another crisis of isolation. And once again, you've got to wonder, are they all in their homes, panicked, in fear and in anxiety, pulling their hair out, going, is Saul gonna find us? We need to hide. We we, we, we need to isolate. We, We need to be as far away from others as possible. But then God had a plan to turn that crisis of isolation into a divine opportunity for greater connection once again. Because as the story unfolds, this Saul who opposed the church vehemently, he had this coming to Jesus moment and the road to Damascus and his eyes were opened and he turned his life around. And instead of bringing trouble to the church, Saul began to bring help to the church. And as a result, it tells us in Acts chapter nine, that because of this massive turnaround and this crisis of isolation, it turned into an opportunity for a greater gathering, deeper connection. It says that all the believers came back together again. And it says that they enjoyed peace on every side. And listen, it even says that they enjoyed an increase in numbers. As a result of the crisis, the church actually grew. It wasn't diminished In the crisis, it was positioned to launch and to grow and to go forward and to reach other people as a result of the crisis that it hadn't even been reaching yet. Friends, what a beautiful example for us to understand the power that God has to pivot us out of a crisis of isolation and move into an opportunity for deeper connection. I think another important thing for us to understand, again, a theme that comes out of the scriptures to us, is that we are all members of one body, the body of Christ. We're not just members of a church at this address or in this city or that denomination. We are members of the body of Christ. And as members of the body of Christ, I want you to know something important. And this is how, again, a strategy, a principle that will help us establish a deeper connection with each other. To remember as members of the body, we're responsible for each other and we are responsible to each other. Now, in Acts chapter two, which I referred to earlier in verse 42 through 47, it actually gives us a description of members of the body being responsible to each other and for each other. I want to read it to you because it's very, very exciting for me to share this with you. It says this in Acts, 4, uh, Acts 2, 42, 47. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and they devoted themselves to fellowship. Do you hear that? They devoted themselves to actually just being together, to finding ways to connect, to talk, to support, to love each other. They were devoted to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It says, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders that were happening. And then again in verse 44, listen to this statement. All the believers were together 
and they had everything in common. What a beautiful picture of unity and togetherness that came uh, as a result of the original crisis of isolation and turned into this great, greater gathering together. They were all together and they had everything in common. And then to take it a step further, it also says they sold property, they sold possessions, and they took the resources of those sales and they provided for those people who were in need. So they, they were connecting with each other, but they felt the sense of responsibility for those who were in need as well. And they were making personal sacrifices to make sure that they were part of the solution to meet those needs. And so every day it says, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread together and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying all the favor of all the people. And then the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Do you hear that? A gathering wasn't even just about believers coming together, but again, it was about this expansion, this idea that the church is on a mission. And it's interesting for me to see in this moment that, that God took believers who were scattered and they brought them together, but then he was scattering them in a different way, not scattering for isolation, but scattering them out into the world for mission to broadcast the light and the love of Jesus. And as a result, it says many were being added on a daily basis to those who were being saved. So let's come back to this statement that I mentioned a few moments ago, that we are responsible for each other and we are responsible to each other. You know, a simple scripture verse in 1 Corinthians 12 describes it in one sentence. It takes everything from Acts 2 and kind of puts it all into one sentence. And it says this, all parts of the body should have equal concern for each other. Do you hear that? It doesn't say that the followers should have concern for the leaders or the leaders should be having concern for the followers. It puts an equal responsibility on all of us for each other. It says all the believers, all parts of the body should have equal concern one for the other. So I think there's two simple ways that we can give thought to how we can have equal concern for each other during this time. Number one, I think it's to find ways to connect on a deeper way relationally. We need relationship. We need community. We need to connect with each other. It's no longer possible for somebody to traipse into the building 20 minutes late in a service and, and leave 10 minutes early so that we, I mean, we don't have that anymore. We have an opportunity to connect relationally with each other. And so one of the initiatives we're doing to help you with that is we're, we're in the process of launching a bunch of new virtual and online uh, video groups where people can connect together through technology in various ways. And uh, this is important because a lot of our people are already in groups, but maybe in this moment you're saying, I'm not even in, one, in a group at all. I'm not part of a smaller circle in the bigger gathering of all of these rows and I want to get connected, then we're gonna give you an ability to respond, a step to take right at the end of this message. So stay tuned for that. The blessing of what happens when we connect relationally is the amount of care and support and prayer and connectivity just skyrockets. And that is God's heart for the body of Christ, that all members have equal concern for one another. And that happens when we get into these smaller circles and these smaller groups and we learn people's names and learn their stories and they learn our names and they learn our stories. I think the second step that we need to take going beyond just connecting relationally is to serve sacrificially, to actually find a need that exists and to meet that need to find someone who has a practical need for food uh, or a way, a means to pay the rent or, and say, I'm gonna be that answer. God, make me the answer. Pray that prayer. God, make me an answer to somebody's need and that God would work through your life to become provision for them and establish a testimony of his goodness in their lives. Friends, we need to be thoughtful of ways that we can serve sacrificially. 
So in light of that, again, we're going to give you an ability to respond at the end of the service in just a few moments that we've thought of uh, around a dozen different ways that you might be able to serve sacrificially. And perhaps you've already got one in mind. Just run with that, go with it. But if you're looking for ways and ideas to pray about, to think about serving sacrificially, then we want you to respond at the end of the service. Because we believe that through these two avenues, if we can get a brand new wave of people connecting relationally and serving sacrificially, then God is going to help us answer this divine mandate that we have to establish a deeper connection during this crisis of isolation. And to do that, I think we are going to respond in a very godly way and brand new testimonies of God's God's heart at work, God's kingdom at work in our lives are going to come to pass in your life and in our community as well. So let's wrap this up today. The ways that you can respond depend on how you're watching us online. If you're watching online with Facebook and it's a live video, just to the right of the video, there's gonna be some prompts there that you can follow. Otherwise, if you're watching on demand after the fact, after fact, or you're watching through other means, you can go to our website, www.mycalvary.life forward slash connect. And you go to that connect page And there's going to be two simple options. A, I want to connect relationally. And you can fill out a simple e-form that our connections pastor is going to get and find a way uh, to explore that you can get connected into one of our new groups. Or B, if it's to serve sacrificially, you can click the button to help me find a way to serve. And again, our connections pastor and our staff team are going to be in response to you, uh, to that form request. And we're going to be able to give you all sorts of ideas. of them will be within the framework of Calvary Ministries. Others will be with organizations that we support or that we endorse the work that they're doing as well. But friends, I want to invite you even now on Sunday morning or whenever you're watching to just pause and say, God, what do I need to do? God, do I need to be connected relationally during this crisis of isolation? Or maybe, God, I need to serve sacrificially during this crisis of isolation. I need to to help be somebody else's answers. Friends, I think we can all find a way uh, to ramp it up and to get involved in one of these aspects. So let me bring this to a close. Listen, friends, we know that most of our viewers and most people who are following along are believers, but just in case you somehow stumbled upon this video and you would say, Jeff, I am not a follower of Jesus. I want to give you the opportunity uh, to bring change to your life. If you're feeling like God is moving in your heart, if you're feeling like God is drawing you into relationship with him, uh, it can all begin with the simple prayer of confession that says, Jesus, uh, I acknowledge that you're real. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I need a savior. Forgive me of my sins and welcome God into your life and make a promise to honor his love for you by living for him. And friends, if you want to pray that prayer today, we would love to hear from you after the fact. Again, in the same ways that I instructed you to respond earlier in the video, there should be a button uh, on our main page at www.mycalvary.life. Follow Jesus, make a commitment to live for him. We'd love to hear from you and we can send you some resources that will help you with this brand new relationship with God that you're starting today. So listen, I'm all out of breath. And I just want to close by saying how much I love you guys, how much uh, Carrie and I and our family, we miss you. We are so looking forward to being together again. And we speak God's blessing over your home. We speak God's blessing over your hearts. We speak his blessing over your jobs and over your plans and, and ability to provide for yourself and provide for your family. We speak God's blessing over your relationship with him and just receive God's blessing today as we close in your home and in your life as well. Be praying for us. We're praying for you as well. Don't forget to let us know what your prayer requests are. We look forward from hearing from you soon. Otherwise, God bless and we'll catch you again later this week. Take care.